Hi, I'm Braden Hancock here at Smirkle AI. I'm uh, one of the co-founders and head of technology and research. I'm going to talk a little bit about weak supervision. Weak supervision is a machine learning approach where higher level and often noisier sources of supervision can be used to create much larger training sets and much more quickly than could otherwise be produced by manual labeling examples one by one. So how does weak supervision work? If we've got these higher level, much more scalable, but potentially a little bit noisier sources of signal, how are we gonna combine those? And the answer is that uh, we're gonna have usually multiple sources of supervision. Uh, in Snorkel flow, these are labeling functions. And by observing when and where these different labeling functions agree and disagree with one another, we can actually in unsupervised ways automatically learn when and where and how much to trust each of them, essentially learning their areas of expertise and overall uh, level of expertise um, so that when we do combine their votes, we end up with uh, the highest quality label that we can for each data point. And again, the benefit we see then is that uh, in general, having much more training data, even if it's a little bit imperfect, uh, nearly always beats out having a much, much smaller set of, we'll say, you know, perfectly handpicked labels. So when should weak supervision be used? Uh, one place is when you need uh, a whole lot of training data. Basically, you know, if your problem would, would do better with 100,000 pretty good labels compared to 100 perfect labels, it may be worth looking at higher level interfaces for getting more data you know, to win the day. And I'd say most problems today could benefit from, in general, more data rather than a much smaller, perfectly handpicked set. Another reason for considering weak supervision is in a situation where you're uh, needing to adapt regularly, um, perhaps because there's a uh, frequent uh, shift in the distribution of your data, such as in an adversarial setting, or uh, simply because uh, your needs are changing frequently, whether that's uh, adding new classes or needing to reflect uh, new realities about your problem that you're working with. And then finally, um, when you have many different sources that you'd like to bring to bear, uh, maybe potentially different uh, models or uh, existing labels or types of signals that, that you could use feasibly to create a training set, um, weak supervision provides you with a unified framework for combining all of these to get high quality labels that factor in all of these different assets. Some of the benefits of weak supervision are that you can uh, generally produce much, much larger training sets, as well as uh, produce those much faster than if you had a manual labeling approach um, or, or any variant on that. And uh, it also gives you a unified way of combining many different sources of supervision that you may have access to, including you know, existing resources, other models, uh, some, some labels uh, or things like that. As we introduce weak supervision to folks, uh, it often reminds them of rule-based systems. And that makes sense because the inputs can look pretty similar uh, in terms of you know, what's actually generating these labels. Um, or in this, the case of the rule-based classifier, the predictions. The difference is that the rule-based classifier does stop there. The rules are the classifier. Whereas in weak supervision, you're actually just creating a training set that you're then going to use to train a machine learning-based model. And that model can be much more powerful, take advantage of state-of-the-art techniques in machine learning, such as embeddings and transfer learning and things like that. And as a result, ends up being generally much more robust and able to handle uh, you know, little deviations uh, compared to the rules. You end up with just a much smoother decision space and access to a lot more features than if you were only relying on the rules in your system or that were generating your, your training labels. Having applied weak supervision to lots of problems over the years, we've learned quite a bit about what features and workflows make it most accessible and practical to use. And we built Snorkel Flow specifically with that in mind. So one of the things that Snorkel Flow gives you is the ability to easily express lots of different types of signal, whether that's importing existing labels or models that you have and applying them, uh, or allowing you to write uh, different labeling functions that are rule-based or heuristic-based. It also then gives you access to the label model uh, algorithms that we've developed that will automatically combine these different uh, scalable but potentially noisy sources of supervision to create high-quality labels uh, on a you know, per data point level. And then finally, there's just general infrastructure that's nice to have when it comes to uh, the application of these functions, guidance throughout the process, uh, integrated model training so that you can loop back and make adjustments to your weak supervision sources as you go. So all of these things uh, we've we found to be very practically helpful and, uh, and that's why we've made them available on the platform for others.
hopefully this has been helpful. There's lots more that we could talk about. We've got some other resources about weak supervision on our website that you can take a look at, snorkel.ai. Um, or we're also happy to, to talk with you individually about your use cases or your questions about how weak supervision can be applied to the problems that you care about. So don't hesitate to reach out 